I want to demonstrate meiosis using a pack of playing cards. Here is a diploid somatic cell. It's only got one chromosome pair. There is an animal with one chromosome pair. It's a jumping jack ant. And let's see what he has. Uh, here's one chromosome. It's represented by the suit clubs. And here's another chromosome, which is homologous to it, which is represented by the suit hearts. And these are quite nice because these can represent genes. Say the, the seven gene uh, has got two allele pairs. It's got one gene. One one allele and another allele of the seven gene, and that could represent, I don't know, the, uh, the, whether the antennae are furry or straight. There we go. And this, this, the club one might say furry and this one might say straight. And we don't actually know which one's dominant because we can't see the ant. Let's assume that furry is dominant. So if it's got, if it's heterozygous for this seven gene, then this one's going to dominate. This one's going to be expressed and this one's not. But there you can, you can see in the genome, you've got each gene has got a, 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 its own allele pair and it's, it's all laid out like that. Now you have 23 pairs. So you've got uh, 23 club suits and you've also got 23 heart suits you've got 46 chromosomes in total but just for this this demonstration we're just using one chromosome pair now um during interphase, which is where the cell's just doing its thing, and it's also also in interphase, it's it's making another set of each chromosome. So we can use this the, these uh, cards to demonstrate that we've got another black chromosome and we've got another red chromosome as well. It's quite good. We've got four chromosomes now, and we're ready to split. We're ready to split by meiosis to make some sex cells, to make some gametes. Prophase is when meiosis starts, and prophase is when all the chromosomes sort of crunch in and they sort of unravel and they, they look a bit denser and you can see them for the first time. And, and they, they join in the middle like this. They join in sort of an X shape. They join around about the six and the seven and the eight if in playing card land, called the centromere. There we go, we've got sort of an X shape there. Uh, but we don't just want one chromosome to go off to one sex cell and another chromosome to go off to another sex cell. It's very boring like that. There needs to be genetic variation. And there's an amazing sequence here called crossing over, where you might take, I don't know, the jack, the queen, and the king of the black chromosome and swap it with the jack, the queen, and the king of the red chromosome. So you've got, you, you're mixing up alleles, not only across chromosomes, but also across these two mini bits of chromosomes as well. They're called chromatids. So in, when we move to our, when we start to split these up, we go to metaphase, which is like metaphase in mitosis, except instead of lining up next to each other, the, these chromosome pairs line up uh, in front of each other. If we say you've got one pole over there and one pole over there, so then the, and these, this one's gonna go that way and this one's gonna go that way. It's not always that way. You've got 23 pairs, remember. So whenever your, your cells are undergoing meiosis, you might, you're gonna have um, a pair there and a pair there and 22, 21 others over there, and they might not necessarily go to the pole nearest them. This is another way of mixing up genes. It's called independent assortment. For the ease, for ease today, we're going to move these up that way, and they can go off to make two daughter cells of their own. We're going to use, we're going to bring these red ones to the fore. And this is when we finish off our sort of first half of the meiosis treatment. We, we can almost return to, uh, to almost normality. It's called interphase two. And uh, this, this, we, we're going to split this off again. And the whole cycle begins again. But this time we've just got one chromosome in two kind of bits. And it's still joined at the middle there. And uh, we go into metaphase two and they're joined up in the middle. And then finally in metaphase two, we split these apart split these apart like that and this goes off to make two daughter cells this goes off to make two daughter cells and the black suits which went off over there they've made two daughter cells as well we've got four daughter cells and they're all haploid they're all haploid you see and not only let's, let's look at this one this is the more interesting one at the bottom not only are they haploid but look at this we've got all our genes We've got our jumping jack ant genes. Remember, number seven gene is the gene for um, f f smooth hair or, or furry hair. I can't remember which one this was. Was it the smooth hair? It's the recessive smooth hair. So this one's going to have smooth hair if it meets another recessive uh, allele from the egg, if this is the sperm. But also this, this over here in the, in the corner, we've got these, these black ones as well, which are going to show that the crossing over and independent assort assortment have both led to this being quite a nice genetic mix-up 
almost shuffling them literally like cards. And this will, will crunch back in to be the nucleus of our new jumping jack ant sperm cell.